Facebook Interrupted is running another contest. We're giving away a waterproof Kindle Oasis. The contest runs from November 5th to November 27th. To find out more, go to www.bookinterrupted.com slash contests. This episode is sponsored by the blog Home Under Clutter. Lindsay is a self-proclaimed clutterbug. She got so sick of living in clutter that she did a huge purge. Join her on her never-ending journey of decluttering and organizing at www.homeunderclutter.com. Are you really connecting with a particular Book Interrupted member and want to hear more of what they have to say? With your free trial to Unpublished, you gain access to the Book Interrupted Inklings and real-life video content of our day-to-day challenges, thoughts, and opinions. Go to www.bookinterrupted.com backslash unpublished to start your free trial today. Parental guidance is recommended because this episode has mature topics and strong language. Here are some moments you can look forward to during this episode of Book Interrupted. For me, I was scared because I knew it was going to be asking me to do something. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to read this book. Being like, oh my God, I can't wait to sneak away and find a few minutes. And so there's a lot of meat in it, I found. You're not waking up being like, oh, here we go again. Um, Are you thinking of anything in particular? Someone like me who is never going to get up at five in the morning. Trying to make changes where I didn't need changes. My body and soul. The inflammation is the goal. Trying to learn something new. Disrupted. Mind, body, and soul. Uh, Inspiration is with uh, And we're gonna talk it uh, out. On Book Interrupted. Welcome to Book Interrupted, a book club for busy people to connect and one that celebrates life's interruptions. If you'd like to join along, this book cycle is from October 24th to November 28th. It's our fan Lindsay's book pick. And we're reading 4% Fix by Karma Brown. How to find guilt-free time for what you really want to do and why it matters. How would you use this one hour, only 4% of your day, to change your life? Let's listen in to this episode's group discussion. So does everyone want to say if they recommend the book? Because we want to go around. Mary, do you want to go first? Because you're in my number one spot. Am I? Oh okay, God. yeah, okay. Right at the top here. I like what she's saying. I, I think that I wasn't, I didn't find the book super interesting. I think that I would find Karma Brown if I met her super interesting. I feel like her and I have read a lot of the same things. So the stuff that she was telling me, a lot of it I already knew and had like read the sources that she was referring to. So in that way, I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. And I agree with her approach too. I think it's a good idea. I wasn't super excited while reading the book, I think, because of, I felt like a kind of didn't need it. I guess that was it. So what I recommended, I think it depends on who it is. I think for somebody like Kim was saying, somebody who's trying to, who's always saying, I don't have time. I want to do this. And I just don't have time. I think it's really good. So I think it's a book that I would recommend to somebody if they're in need of it. Right. Kim, you want to go next? Sure. I think we know. (laughs) This book I I would recommend in general. Like I agree with Mary and I hear what Mary's saying, because if she's read all those sources, she's like, I don't need someone to tell me all the things I already learned for myself back to me. For me, who has not, I knew some of that stuff, but I haven't been so uh, knowledgeable on this topic in this way that I felt like it was redundant. For me, I was scared because I knew it was going to be asking me to do something. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to read this book. I think it's going to tell me to get up early. And um, <laughs> right away. Yeah, did. Yeah. yeah. But the author, <laughs> like it, she knew on a level that she doesn't just blatantly call out, but she knew on a level that that's how uh, I think a lot of readers might be feeling when they read that book. Cause she was like end of first chapter or something like now set your alarm clock for five. And I was like, fuck, I knew it. And then you like turn the page or next sentence. She's like, just kidding. And I'm yeah. like, oh, <laughs> and like the book progressed in that way where she was always like, I'm not forcing you to do anything, have this information. And if you can find it valuable and, and fit it into your life in a way that works for you, then you're welcome. You know what I mean? So for that reason, I really liked it. I really appreciated her sense of humor. And in spite of myself, 
I'm actually going to get a lot out of this book, a book that I didn't think I wanted to read, a book I didn't think that I was going to like. I actually do really like it and I am going to take from it what I need or think will be working for me and I'm the better for it. So thank you, Lindsay Fan. I guess yeah. that's what we're calling you now. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what everyone calls you today. So, okay, Lindsay Fan, thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> Let's go next. Schweitz or Lindsay no, not fan? Okay. Schweitz, Schweitz is fine. <laughs> um, surprisingly, I love this book. I thought it was great. If I'm going to read something like this, the, that kind of journalism basis where there's facts and she has a sense of humor and it doesn't feel like it's forcing anything on me. Yeah, I thought it was great and interesting. And I think there's a ton of stuff in there that anyone, even someone like me who is never going to get up at five in the morning, can take and learn and be reinforced about sleep and about, you know, about focusing on certain things, about accomplishing tasks and how to finish those tasks about, there's just a ton. So I, I just really enjoyed reading it. So for me, yes, totally recommend. Thumb up. Okay. Who wants to go next? Kara? Um, I would absolutely recommend uh, if you are looking around for a book on how to manage your time, how to include more productivity or better performance in your day, of all the books in the self-help industry on this topic, I would recommend this one. As much as it wasn't, I never found myself longing to read the book or being like, oh my God, I can't wait to sneak away and find a few minutes to read the book. It just wasn't that for me, but that doesn't mean that it was poorly done. So yeah, I would say sure her personality and sense of humor mixed with uh, her resources and facts. It was beautifully done. It is the kindest approach to yourself on this topic that I have read yet. So I would recommend it to others. Great. Leah? Uh, yeah, I would recommend it much like Mayor's answer. I would recommend it to certain friends who have trouble launching their passion projects for me no i think i was doing it better before and the changes i tried to make made me un unhappy I, I was happier before i tried to change my schedule i think i was trying to follow trying to make changes where i didn't need changes so for me the book wasn't bad it just wasn't for you. useful but i would recommend it for people who need to figure out their time yeah, so that's how I am I four percent fixed. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel too. I kind of feel like in the same boat yeah, as but there was Meredith bad. and Leah. So I would recommend the book. However, I feel just like Leah and Mare that I don't really, I didn't really need the book. I would recommend this to anybody that's having time management because, like Lindsay said, it had so much research, had so much information. Also, like Kim said, it, she took all the excuses out of someone who's having a hard time figuring out how to do something that they love in their current schedule. Like, she took all the excuses out of it. And I really like her. Like, I think I'd really enjoy spending time with her because I think we're similar. Like, yeah, like Mare, I've read books she's read, like Big Magic. I, I just recently read it. I love that book. I would recommend it to someone that did need the book for time management, but I just, I just really don't. So I think that this book I would recommend for many people, even for people that there's a part in the book that said that it's too late to do something like that doctor that became a doctor at 50. Like it's too late for me. I have people in my life that I think would be, would really benefit from this book. So I like that part too. So I think this is a really good book for any of the people being like, oh, I wasted my life and things I didn't like. And you're like, well, you're not dead. So you could try some stuff. Um, Are you thinking of anybody in particular? <laughs> maybe someone I've been spending a lot of time with. Sarah, someone's got a problem. A, I can't even. Noise problem. Like oh. as if someone's rubbing their microphone with a piece of paper yeah. and I'm and then dying. I started laughing because I'm like, Kim, I, like I was like, I might have it. to take my earphones out. I can't yeah. even. I was wondering what was going on with Kim. I can't hear anything. I think it was you, Sarah. I, I think while you. you were talking and you were moving. Oh, because like, I was holding my book. I don't know. No, it was now move your book around. <laughs> it's gone. I don't know. It's happening gone. the whole time, and I was gonna vomit. I couldn't. I was like, can and I could see Kara laughing. Only that's what made me feel better. I was like, somebody sees me. What? You're like, <laughs> what's going on? Know. She's got life. It know. was like the longest <laughs> response ever. It came back. Oh, there, there it is. right there. Oh, it might be Kara. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh so it was me. It oh, is you. Oh, yeah. So should I re-record? It just no, it's okay. It was nice and animated. She did some but... moving and didn't. It was good too. Like I just, 
I didn't notice it on my screen. I no, I didn't hear it at all. So I heard it. Be fine. I heard, I heard it too. It. Fan Lindsay. Why don't we let Fan Lindsay have the? Remarks. Can we let Fan Lindsay have the last? The last. The last words, laugh. Or, yeah. No pressure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all the pressure. Just want a recording you of you about? laughing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, I would recommend the book. I mean, Kim and I were talking about different life things going on when I was suggesting it to her as a reader that how great of a book it was for me and what I was getting out of it. I feel too, like she writes in a very forgiving way, like everybody sort of commented on as well. Like she makes it real for what you have going on and she doesn't force her way on anybody else. And as far as a self-help book, that's what I'm looking for. I don't want somebody necessarily to tell me what's working for them because that just makes me feel defensive or feel like, well, whatever you're doing is working for you. That's great. You figured it out, but I haven't. So help me. Don't tell me what you do. Just help me. (laughs) So I think that that was a really refreshing read. I did find it like Mary was talking about, like I, I found it kind of redundant partway through. Like I know that I need sleep, but I know the benefits of it. I don't need to be sort of reminded every single chapter that that is important, but it's still hard to put into practice sometimes. And so I kind of felt like, okay, I get it. Like, yes, I need sleep. <laughs> yes, I get it. Okay. I still get it. I got it. <laughs> so in that way, I found it. I was just kind of waiting for the next thing to come to inspire me, but I found it really full too. Like it does talk about your focused for and how to value the things that you want to value in your life. And so there's a lot of meat in it, I found, even regardless of the sleep stuff being redundant. And so in that way, I would, yeah, recommend it to anybody. Because I feel like like all of us got something out of it, whether it was Leah who figured out that it's not for her or whether it was somebody else getting something out of it. So I think that a lot of these books, somebody's going to get something out of it. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay, for coming on and being part of this. I know it was, uh, you weren't sure at first, so <laughs> we're really glad that you came on. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you. And hopefully at some point we get to meet you in person. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you guys for having me awesome. honored. It's been a pleasure, and you guys are awesome people and so welcoming. So, you've made it fun. Oh, good. <laughs> good. I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, Wonderful. I'm glad you. I'm thank glad you. for the book. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> this interruption is brought to you by Unpublished. Do you want to know more about the members and Book Interrupted? Go behind the scenes. Visit our website at www.bookinterrupted.com. Book interrupted. You've got mail. Oh my gosh, how exciting is this? Best interruption ever. On a previous podcast episode, uh, Meredith was mentioning how she wanted to get back into like old school correspondence, a little pen and paper action. And to my pleasant surprise, I just went to the mailbox dropped all the bills on the floor and ran back to my house squealing with delight because I received a letter from Meredith and I'm just about to read it and I'm so excited. Already I'm starting to think in the back of my mind, which perfect pen am I going to use to write a correspondence letter back to Meredith? Because it has to be a gel tip. I'm just saying. Anyways, what a great interruption. So fantastic. Book interrupted. It's book report time. We're going to find out from each member their final thoughts. And do they recommend the book? Let's listen. This is my book report for The 4% Fix. I really thought I was not going to like this book. I thought it was going to make suggestions that I wouldn't want to follow or could, didn't feel like I could follow. And then I would beat myself up about it. And really, it is, I can't put my finger exactly on how it has been presented, the information. It's obviously, it's a giant persuasive argument for waking up at five in the morning. That is what this is. So if you don't want to be exposed to, I don't know, 280 pages of persuasion ish, then don't get it. But if you are interested in having a little assistance in finding more time in your day, I think this is a worthy read because this argument, it does do what it set out to do, which is persuade. It's very persuasive. And it does so in such a way that you don't feel bad about yourself. You feel like you could choose not to if you wanted to. You also have the option to 
personalize the information so that if 5 a.m. is literally your worst nightmare, then, you know, 6 or 9.30 or whatever it is for your lifestyle. So the author is really good at offering the reasons why you would want to get up at 5 and then also provides alternative interpretations of what she's suggesting so that it could be modified to fit any lifestyle. It's still really good at arguing for getting up at five though. Like there's, for example, she's like, there's research that supports some people, most people being more productive or creative first thing in the morning. So that's one of the good reasons for why you would do the actual suggestion of the book. Also, I am going to try it. I have been putting myself to bed earlier. I have been waking up slightly earlier, but not to do anything. I've just practiced adjusting that time schedule. And even just in the small adjustments that I've made, I can feel the difference. And I also feel like I can do it. So just by taking like the smallest baby steps and insisting I go to bed at 10, when I go to bed at 10, I still read for an, anywhere up to an hour. So I'm, I'm asleep by 11. Reading really helped. I read this book. So that also reinforced the message. And then I would set my alarm instead of at seven, I would set my alarm for 630. So really super baby steps, totally able to do it. And once I got consistent on my bedtime, because that's my biggest challenge, because I want to stay up late night. That's my only alone time after the family goes to bed. I want to stay up and just have time by myself, and which is usually me just watching TV. So I'm even toying with the idea of practicing the 4% fix and just watching TV in the morning, just to get into the habit first before I attempt, you know, whatever other creative endeavor I might you know, be saying, I wish I could do that, but I just don't have the time. I think the ultimate goal is to 4% fix myself into that routine with things that are super easy for me, like watching TV. And then I might attempt to add exercise, but I know that I should not do that right away because I don't want to exercise. And so getting up that early will surely end sooner than I plan if I'm doing it to do something I don't want to do which is part of the book as well. Anyway, so would I recommend 4% Fix? Yes, I would. Even if you don't end up doing any of it, it's still an interesting read. So, and she's got a great voice and an awesome sense of humor. Karma Brown is her name, which is such a great name too. So is there anything not great about this? No, there you go. 4% Fix, two thumbs up. I finished the book and I think overall, I like the idea of the book. I don't think this is the type of book that you would pick up unless you were looking for better time management or more time to do the things that you want. And right now in my life, I don't really feel that way. I mean, sure, there's days when I feel very frustrated. I've got two small children and sometimes I just don't want to do the housework and I want some time to myself just to do the things that I want to do. But at the same time, you know, I left work to be home with my kids and this is kind of the thing that I've chosen to do for now. And I know that when they're both in school, I will have a little bit more time to myself and I'm okay with that. One of my main philosophies in my life is to try to live life without regrets. So whenever I am faced with a decision, I try to look at it and say, what would I regret more, doing this thing or not doing this thing? So even though I don't have a lot of time to myself in my life these days, I, it's not something that I hugely regret. I don't feel like I'm missing out on life right now. I'm very happy with the way that I spend my time most of the time. So I did wish this book was a little bit shorter. I think I've said that before and it dragged on a little bit for me. However, I can see the value in this book and I like a lot of things that Karma Brown is saying. So I think her and I get along very well. I don't know if there's anything else left to say. I have started waking up a little bit earlier. I wake up with my husband now. He gets up at 5.30 and it's nice either we spend time together, which is the one thing that I was feeling like some days we didn't have a lot of time to connect. So that's nice. Or sometimes I do something for myself, like reading or playing my keyboard or I don't know, just relaxing in the quiet house. It doesn't last very long before my kids wake up again. And that's okay. I'm actually trying to spend more time enjoying my time with them instead of being more structured, but that's a whole different story. So do I recommend the book? 
I would recommend the book to anybody who is feeling like they don't have time to themselves and who just has something they want to do and doesn't know how to fit it in. And if you're not convinced that you should wake up earlier in the morning, which just sounds like a really hard thing, this book kind of removes all of your excuses and tells you why it's a good idea. And I also love that she's not advocating for less sleep. Sleep is so important, and I truly believe that. In fact, she's just saying, at the end of your day, you're probably not being super productive. So just go to bed earlier and then wake up and be productive. And I think that's some pretty good advice. I might recommend this book to some people. And I think that's about it. I don't have anything else to say. I feel kind of neutral about the book, I suppose. I didn't hate it and I didn't love it. That's it. Till next time. Hey, so I just finished The 4% Fix by Karma Brown. And I'm kind of in that zone of, you know, when you're reading for a long time and you're kind of just chilled out completely. Well, that's what I'm feeling. So I'm grabbing my energy back up so I can tell you all about the book. I really loved this book. I thought it was great. Probably not, as I said before, going to take all of it. Uh, with me, that 5 a.m. thing's just not going to happen for me. But uh, I do appreciate her tone. I mean, if I'm going to read a self-help book, this is the kind of self-help book that I want to read. It's fact-based, research-based. She talks about her own stories of herself, of other people's stories. You know, she even says at the end that, you know, we are not robots and this is not a training manual and things are never as clear-cut as they seem. Most days we're trying to fit round pegs into square holes across a variety of aspects of life. And I, you know, I like that so much more than that's the kind of self-help guru -y thing where somebody says, oh, I've lived this life and I know the best for everything. I mean, she's saying this is what I did. This is what worked for me. And, you know, you do you. You figure out what you can do that will work for you and find that time. But just try to find that hour for yourself. And she says the first thing of the day uh, would be the best time. I mean, but she also says give yourself a break. Like, don't stress if you can't do it every single day or you need to sleep in or you know you you just can't do it that day because the next day you get 24 slices of that cake and the next day those 24 slices start again so that day you just can't do it well then the next day do it again and try again and you know I totally appreciate that I mean I appreciate her thing at the end where she has uh, where you can write in. So I filled it out and I did, you know, what are, what is worth for me getting out of bed for? And what am I going to do afterwards? And what's my bucket list? And how can I accomplish that? But start small, do a one step at a time, Ch not do the big gigantic goals and feel like you're going to get there right away. You know, take it one day at a time, one hour at a time, that first hour of the morning. Or in my case, probably won't be the first hour of the morning, but that one hour every day just devoted to me, turn off your email, try to, you know, spend some time away from all the other distractions and focus on whatever it is you want to do, which, you know, for me will be finishing my zombie novel. It's going to happen. Karma Brown and Lindsay, thank you for this. And uh, I highly recommend this book to anyone, even if you don't take it all. You might have inspiration to accomplish something that you didn't think you had time for before. And that's it. Thanks so much for joining us. Here we are with my book report on The 4% Fix by Karma Brown. Karma, thank you so much for writing this book. Gosh, I'm still feeling like I have a little bit of shame about my initial reactions uh, to this book without having like any clue what it was about. I just like the judge and critic really came out there as well as my ego being like, I don't need to learn new things about this, but I do need to learn new things. And I'm so glad that I swung uh, the pendulum in the other direction. Uh, and that uh, I gave this book a chance. Great recommendation, Lindsay R. Thank you again so much. Karma, I look forward to reading other books of yours. I really like how you, how every single chapter was like very small, so minute and digestible and easy peasy lemon squeezy to be able to fit into your day. 
if you have a busy life, which so many of us adults do. Uh, so that was really great. I kind of felt like you were setting us up for success as a reader, that you weren't trying to bombard us with too much information at once or making us feel like, and maybe this is just how I am, that you know, sometimes when I pick up a book and I want to read it, I really like the idea of being able to complete in one sitting a chapter. And sometimes I just feel, I don't know, like, I'm like, what's the matter with you? How slow a reader are you? Or I end up getting very frustrated if I've chosen a moment where I'm not all by myself and I've got like family around and they're being busy and they're interrupting. They're just being themselves. And yet sometimes I get a little bit frustrated because I'm like, oh my gosh, can't I even get through a chapter? Uh, so I really appreciated that. Thank you so much that you really broke it down uh, just a few pages per chapter. That was delightful. I don't know what my favorite part was. Okay, well, I really appreciated all the reminders about how important it is to get a good sleep. Because although I understand this in theory, in practice, I don't always do it. Even though I have the best of intentions, I just try to squeeze a little bit more out of my day. My kids are going to bed uh, later and later because, well, they're getting older, right? Like they're not going to bed at 7 p.m. anymore. So that means that after we do story time, I've just gotten so used to in the evenings after they're in bed that I get like a little bit of time again to myself with my husband and that we can both kind of do like tying up loose ends on our work things because uh, he is self-employed and I am also an entrepreneur. Uh, but sometimes I push the limit on that. So thank you, Karma, for really emphasizing the importance of sleep uh, because it is important. And uh, we certainly, it's just kind of like this ripple effect. And I don't know about you guys, but like, you know, like how like dominoes do, 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 do. If I want to be at my best, things that can certainly throw me off are not getting enough sleep. And then that leads to the next chain of events of having too much caffeine, too much sugar, then just feeling like, oh, great, nice going. Can't stick to healthy eating, can you? And then I just like go and have like a carb coma, you know? Or I'm like, what's the point of exercising if you're just not going to be healthy anymore anyways? So I can get a little bit dramatic and I appreciated the you know, keep it simple, stupid. Just get enough sleep and everything just might be okay. I really like how kind and compassionate you were. There was a lot of forgiveness in there about not necessarily uh, aiming for perfection. It's about the practice. What else did I really enjoy? Oh, I think the chapter that I liked the most was everyone out of the pool. It was such a comical way to address what is sometimes some of our most sabotaging behavior that yeah, clear your time, clear your space, make sure that you are boundaried um, in that the family knows this is your own sacred time. And if you fill up your own well, you will be able to give that much better uh, to those you care about. Really, after you take care of that, sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. Sabotaging behavior comes up in different forms, whether it is this idea of achieving I don't know, like perfection, or for myself, it's the procrastination that comes up a lot, or even just finding hesitancy in yourself because you're noticing that imposter syndrome is coming up there quite a bit. The chapter was really light and it kept the comedy alive for touching upon a topic that sometimes we just don't want to admit that, you know, we're struggling. Thank you so much. It was a great read. It was wonderful, uh, nice and light, not like some other books that we had to cut in half in order to uh, carry around with us in our day. Uh, and I will absolutely be recommending this to others. Take care, my friends. I really didn't really need this book, to be quite honest. It was a really quick read. And like I said in the last one, I had to like read like more than half the book in three days. I think I had a I think it was at page 60 when I had to kind of rush through it but it was really easy to rush through it because it's the way she writes her chapters are very small she is kind of repetitive with the sleep and some of the other things like waking up at five she repeats over and over but then at the same time she gives you excuses not to like take it so strictly and seriously so you don't have to be 
like so hard on yourself. You have to do an hour right away. Like she bite sizes it in a way that gives you, takes away all your excuses not to do that thing you've always wanted to do. So the reason I didn't really need this book is because I'm really good at scheduling and doing the things I really want to do. I'm figuring out how to make things a priority. I already do the 4% fix. However, I think this is a great book for anybody who isn't very good at doing the 4% fix. Also, there's a whole part of the book about like it's never too late to start doing something you really want to do. I also like the Groundhog Day reference because I think a lot of people experience the Groundhog Day. They just are not living that full life like I talk all the time about like could and should, right? And they're only doing the shoulds and not doing any of the coulds. And one of the reasons I started Book Interrupted was because Women Who Roamed the Wolves is all about igniting your creativity, right? And and what my favorite topic, doing what you could do instead of just what you should do. I would recommend this book to some people and other people that I feel like they're really, they are living their best life. They're living a full life. They're living the, the happy life they've always wanted. I wouldn't, but for anyone that's always saying like, oh, I don't have time for that, or I'm too old for that, or I don't have enough time, or I, I should have done that when I was younger and now it's too late. Anybody like that, I would recommend reading this book because it would really help you and ease you into starting to do things you really want to do and building the life you really want. So thank you, Fan Lindsay, for joining Book Interrupted and having us read this book. Wonderful. All in all, I really liked the book. I didn't finish it because I didn't feel like I needed the book. I felt like she was very aligned with my way of thinking and that this book had come to me too late. That I had kind of carved out some areas of my life for the needs and wants of my life and um, that I have mastered at this point anyways, the art of selfishness for my own creative projects. In fact, I think I have too many <laughs> creative projects, which is a problem. Her method for getting up at five didn't suit my schedule very well. It doesn't suit my, uh, <sighs> my natural sleep tendencies don't really align with that. And I did try to do it and it didn't, was almost wasted time because I was so zombie-like that I couldn't do any thinking. I'd wanted to use it for meditating, to carve out an hour of meditation uh, in the morning before my day starts, but I actually just kept falling asleep even when I was sitting up because I was so, I was very, um, I was a blob. <laughs> I was a blob. Maybe after like a couple months of it, I would be more active. I think a better way to spend my personal care goals would be some of the girls had ideas like walking because walking is like a meditation or journaling and I could do those at night which if I didn't have a young child with a school schedule I would probably be as she described a wolf a night owl because that's when I'm more alive like my natural internal rhythm wants me to not stay up super late like stay up till like 11 or 12 and sleep till 8 in the morning it just that doesn't work with public school system I guess so it was it was challenging because I wanted to work it like she had, even though she gave many allowances for doing it the way that works for you. One of my favorite things about the book, however, is all the cutie quotes at the beginning of each chapter. I folded down pages of ones I loved, like a ruffled mind makes restless pillows. And that's by Charlotte Bronte. Here's another one. One of my, my loves, Julia Child. You must have discipline to have fun, which I think that <laughs> I like that one a lot. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Arthur Ashe, I love that. It takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. Eleanor Roosevelt. That might be my favorite quote I read in such a long time. I love planning. So that made me feel happy because wishes are plans but wishes don't come true unless you plan for how to get there. And I love a good plan. What else do we got here? Let's do one more. Let's do one more. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. Will Durant. And that's nice. I just like that. I would recommend this. I would recommend this book to any friends or acquaintances that are having trouble launching 
their want, whatever that want may be. If this is the great thing to read to motivate you to start, I think she's funny and her voice comes through in reading it. She's just so funny. I have a lot of good content for any kind of artistic illustration I want to use for Book Interrupted because she's full of fun. And I really, I really like the book. I just kind of, I like my own 4% fix better. It was a better fit for me. And I think she, if she was here today, she said, that's good. Because that's what everyone has to do is figure out how to make their schedule, their life, and their passion a part of their life. So see you in the next one, guys. Okay, so here is my book report for the 4% fix. I wanted to talk a bit about the book and really what a joy it is to read it. It's one of those books where you kind of want to keep on reading it. It doesn't tell you what to do as far as a self-help book goes. It's not like, this is my system, you have to follow my system, and my system will work for you if you do it exactly as I do it. It's more of a, hey, try it out this way, make sure it fits to your life, make sure you know, you accommodate the things that you need to do, your own priorities, but try these few adjustments and see what happens. That kind of book to me, as far as self-help books go, is so much more exciting because at the end of it, I feel more inspired to try adding some of the things into my life. I haven't been told what to do. I haven't been, you know, I don't feel guilty for the way that I do my life or whatever now. It just is the opportunity to try to add a few little adjustments here and there and make it make my life work for me better, which is what I love about the way she writes this book. I feel like she focuses a lot on figuring out your own priorities as opposed to her suggesting what hers are and then going with it, though she does that as far as how to organize your own stuff, but it's not about making her priorities yours. You just still work to your life. And I just love the way that she writes that because that is how I think everybody needs to do their life more. They need to focus on themselves. And like she mentions, she talks about selfishness and it's not necessarily being selfish about your life. It's just focusing on what you value. And if more people were doing that, I think that there would be a lot less selfishness, even though it requires everybody to become selfish. Anyway, I think that she is just a great author and she writes in a way that makes you able to read it quickly and get through the book. I read through the book in about a week and I just found it really straightforward, really easy, easy to follow, nice short chapters, which makes you feel like you're reading a lot faster. So maybe I wasn't actually reading that fast. It just felt like it. I love all of the obvious research she did before writing the book. I find a lot of authors are just like, hey, follow me because whatever I did worked for me. That's kind of more how I'm doing it with my blog. I'm not doing necessarily a lot of research, but I love the support of her research in the book because it makes it seem more like practical advice, which I really appreciate. Anyway, overall, I would highly recommend this book. Obviously, I recommended it to my friend Kim, which brought me here to Book Interrupted. And I just, at the end of the book, felt inspired and wanted to make my life better. So thanks for including me on Book Interrupted. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Book Interrupted. If you'd like to see the video highlights from this episode, please go to our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and you'll be notified when there's new content. Want to be part of the conversation? Have your voice heard on our fan episode next week. Or recommend a book and you could be joining us for a six-week book cycle. Find out more by going to www.bookinterrupted.com fans. Are you interested in buying this book? Do you want to order the next book so you can read along? Go to www.bookinterrupted.com shop to see a complete list of our books. And if you haven't tried them yet, our affiliate partners, The Bookshop, and Libro.fm both help support your local bookstore where available. Thanks for taking the time to check in and connect. We'll see you next time on Book Interrupted. Book Interrupted! Never forget, every child matters.